Hey there, Mr. Sutton here bringing you the IM3 Honors 4-1 lesson on solving by factoring. Specifically, we're going to be solving quadratic equations by factoring. For your warm-up, go ahead and see if you can solve for x in this problem. All right, let's see how we did. Um, so there's a property that will help us here called the zero product property. This property says if the product of two things is zero, one of the factors must be zero because the only way to get zero by multiplying is if you're multiplying by zero. So that means that either x minus 2 has to be zero or x plus 4 has to be zero. They can't both be zero at the same time, um, but just one of them needs to be zero to make this equation true. So in this case, we just solve for x. Plus 2 here gives us x equals 2. Minus 4 here gives us x equals negative 4. And then these are the two possible solutions for this equation. These both work when you plug them in. Now you have to be careful because this only works if one side is factored, like this side is here, and the other side is equal to zero. No zero, no zero product property. Here are two examples where you can apply what we've just learned. Uh, take a minute to pause the video, factor these out, and solve by factoring. All right, let's see how we did. This first one, we can take out a 4x as a common factor. That'll leave us with x minus 11 inside. And then setting each of these equal to 0, we've got 4x equals 0, x minus 11 equals 0. Um, so over here on the left, that means x is going to be 0, or x could be 11. And one quick note on this problem. Um, you could have, if you wanted to, since you have an equation, you could have actually divided everything by 4 and had just x squared minus 11x. Um, one thing you are not allowed to do, however, is dividing everything by x. Although it is tempting, and although it will look like the x went away, if you divided everything by x and just had x minus 11, you would have lost the solution of x equals 0. Uh, so never divide by variables. All right, over here, if we're solving this by factoring, we could split this up into x plus 6, x minus 6. And then these each give us the solutions of negative 6, and positive 6. Um, notice here I didn't set each of these equal to 0. You can keep doing what we did over here, um, or you can do that part in your head and just ask, okay, what would I have to plug in for x to make x plus 6 0? Pause the video and, and see if you can figure out the trick on this next problem. Do you see it? We can't factor anything until we have 0 on one side. So let's add this 12x over here to get 0 on one side. So that'll be x squared plus 12x plus 35. And now we can factor this. Two things that multiply to 35 and add up to 12. Uh, let's see, that's going to be 5 and 7, both positive. So that means x is going to equal negative 5 and negative 7. Of course, we're going to make the problems a little bit tougher as we go here. Um, go ahead and try this one out on your own. Um, so hopefully you used the AC method or, or some kind of guess and check here. Um, if you do the AC method, we've got 6 times negative 3. That's an AC of negative 18. So we need things that multiply to negative to 18 and add up to 17. Well, how about positive 18 and negative 1? So we're going to split up 17 into negative 1x and positive 18x. Now we're going to factor by grouping. We can take an x out of the first two terms, leaving us with 6x minus 1. And we can take a 3 out of the next two terms, leaving us again with 6x minus 1. Now we can take the 6x minus 1 out of everything, and that'll give us x plus 3 left over in another parentheses. And you could set each of these equal to 0 and solve, um, or you could try to do it in your head. So imagine setting 6x minus 1 equal to 0 you would have to add this 1 and then divide by 6. So that would give you x equals 1 over 6. And then this one's a little easier. That's just going to be x equals negative 3. So that's it for solving by factoring. Until next time, this is Mr. Sutton signing off.